Let's bring in a Florida Republican Congressman, Brian Mast. Uh, Congressman, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, Always good to see you. Yeah, Brian, listen, I, I, it, I think Dagan and I think it's not much of a debate about what state is performing better than the other. Obviously, Florida with freedom has prevailed. What do you expect to happen at tonight's debate? What, is, what arguments are Ron DeSantis going to make, and how do you think uh, Newsom rebuffs? You know, I think Governor DeSantis could win this without saying a word just by holding up pictures of Florida anywhere versus pictures of any part of California, and he could win it without saying a word in that way. But you, in your, in your intro, you were talking about the steps against our First Amendment and freedoms of speech. And let's not forget that as well. This is another arrow in Governor DeSantis' quiver. De, uh, you know, Newsom is a part of that machine that wants to silence Americans if they don't go along with the Democrat talking points. And I think those are his two biggest arrows. Congressman, that kind of hits the point. Regardless of how charming Newsom might be to some uh, or articulate, he is, he represents the policies that are restrictive to Americans' ability to choose and make decisions for their families that they see best. He, California, led the way in banning the sale of gasoline-powered automobiles. That kicks in, and I think it's 2035. And that's kind of the centerpiece, if you will, of this climate cult. And that's just one piece of Newsom's war on choice and freedom. Yeah, I think you can look at it like this. Governor DeSantis could say, coming to a state near you, they're going to come after your gas stoves, which means they'll also come after your grills in your backyard. They're going to come after the, the trucking industry in your state and say that all of them have to be electric, over-the-road transport vehicles, inflationary, spikes up the price of anything that you want to get from the grocery store. They're going to say that you're no longer going to have a, a gas station on the corners in your hometown because you have to use the vehicles that they want. They're going to say that they're going to control how your children are educated educated in school, not the way that you as parents want to have input in education in your, in, in your kids' education. And the list goes on and on. You said it correctly. He is the rep, not just a representative of that. He wants to be the architect of saying he knows what's best for you. Doesn't matter how much more it costs you. And it doesn't matter if you don't believe what he believes. They're going to teach your kids how they want. And you got to go kudos uh, to Gavin Newsom for coming in, doing a debate with DeSantis, hosted by Sean Hannity. Really good on him. But it's interesting, if you look at the poll numbers in their states, DeSantis has a 50% rating and Newsom has a 49% rating. They're basically the same. So the people in California, though I may and we all may not want to live in California, the people of California actually love Gavin Newsom, which shows he's doing something right for the people in the state. The people that are staying in California might love Gavin Newsom. The people that are moving to Florida, moving to Texas, moving to other places where they don't have every penny taken out of their pocket by taxes, where they have freedom of speech and freedom of how they want to be entrepreneurs and everything else, they recognize that the grass is literally greener on a number of other states. Don't California Stephanie's Florida. And don't California our United States of America either. Congressman, we want to move on to this. Israel and Hamas reaching a deal to continue the temporary ceasefire for the seventh day while hostages do continue to be released. But some Democrats in Congress want to place conditions on any further aid to Israel, uh, really led by Senator Bernie Sanders uh, among those over in the Senate. And why haven't those Democrat senators taken up the bill that the House of Representatives passed, what, a couple of weeks ago in um, aid to Israel? Yeah, two things. One, they haven't taken up the aid bill because they are soft on making sure that we are appropriate with our spending, cutting spending somewhere when we're going to spend somewhere else. They, they don't like that as policy. That's why they haven't taken it up. To, to Bernie Sanders saying there needs to be these conditions or other things, they want to have some kind of, let's call it soft anti-Semitism, in my opinion. They want to go out there. They know that Israel is in the right. They know that there are hostages. They know that they've mass murdered Israelis, but they still need to find a political way for the Democrat Party to say, listen, you people that are supporting these terrorists and think that these terrorists 
terrorists are okay. We're not going to be that hard on you. We're going to find a way to, to say that Israel must be doing something wrong. They're, they're trying to find a way to do that because, again, for them, it is always the number one, let's say it's always the, the partisan political objective over a national security objective for the Democrat Party. Now, it's, uh, it's well said. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how the political lines break down on uh, uh, attaching strings to, to money. And uh, you're in the art of the possible, not the art of the perfect. Uh, hopefully you get a bill passed with aid that also gives uh, a lot of leeway to the Israelis to fight this war at their doorstep. Brian Mast, always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you for joining us on The Bottom Line. We appreciate always it. Always good to see you.